Up until now, we spent a lot of time working on the characteristic generalized cell. And now we're going to focus specifically on structures that make the plant cell. So examine this diagram and compare it with what you know of the animal cell. Identify which structures are specifically plants. Of those structures, I hope you identified the vacuole. It's a fluid-filled sac used for two purposes. First is storage, and that's water, salts, proteins, carbohydrates, you name it, the plant will store it in this compartment. It really becomes like the junk drawer of your cell. The second is support. This is support from the inside. As you fill that central vacuole, it puts a lot of pressure on the cell membrane pushing outward, which gives you a nice plump fat kind of cell. Healthy plants have full vacuoles, whereas plants that are wilting have vacuoles that are actually rather empty. So the vacuole serves as a support and storage kind of compartment. The second organelle you should have noticed that was different is the chloroplast, and it's primarily a metabolism uh, organelle. You'll find this in algae and plants, so anything that's an autotroph should have this. A chloroplast, prim a chloroplast primary job is photosynthesis. It converts sunlight into carbohydrates by taking water and carbon dioxide to produce glucose and oxygen, which is a waste product. You also notice, like the mitochondria, that the chloroplast has, its, has a double membrane, the inner membrane is folded up, and has its own DNA and ribosomes. So the chloroplast, much like the mitochondria again, is a cell within a cell. The third structure you should find that was primarily different between the generalized animal cell and now a plant cell is the cell wall. Its primary use is support. We're going to find a cell wall in plants, fungus, uh, protista, and even bacteria. Essentially, everything but animals. The cell wall is made up of a tough carbohydrate called cellulose, though other organisms other than plants will also embed proteins instead. Think about a cell wall as the walls of a house. There's a lot of weight, and a plant needs to be able to hold up that weight with a really rigid outside surface. That's your cell wall. Most cells, though, or most cell walls are porous enough to allow things like water, oxygen, and carbon dioxide to move across that wall easily. So actually, it looks more like a fence than an actual wall. But either way, make no mistake, it's rather tough. So now that you've taken some time to differentiate the plant cell from an animal cell, compare and contrast plant and animal cell structures. Make sure you can include any structures, shapes, uh, functions, size, or any other characteristics that might apply. You'll probably have to go back to that initial slide to do this properly. Secondly, update the analogy of a cell as factory, and make sure you include structures that are specific to plant cells.